Grandma's house. Grandma's house. Hello, y'all. I'm Diana Brienne. You know, today I got to thinking about Grandma's house and how growing up, we went there all the time. We kind of had a set schedule most of the time where we went on Mondays, Wednesdays, and I think it was Sundays that we went. So Sunday, Monday, and Wednesdays. And I loved Grandma's house. I grew up in Grandma's house. Grandma's house was a little country house. It had three rooms to it in which she raised five children. How she did it, I have no idea. It set out in a little tiny town of about 10 houses that you had to go down a steep hill to get to it. And there was a swimming hole as you went by to get to Grandma's house. And her house sat very near the railroad track. So we would wave to the conductor and to the caboose man back when they had a caboose um, as it went by every hour. And so Grandma's house was a country town with about 10 houses uh, in that little town that was probably an extension of another smaller town. And so Grandma's house, we just loved. We had a large extended family, a large family back then. Lots and lots of relatives from all angles. And so we'd all gather at Grandma's house. We'd gather on the front porch, the back porch, and the back porch was actually the front porch, and the front porch was actually the back porch. I never really understood that, but the front porch actually uh, sat by the railroad track and faced the railroad track, and the back porch is where we actually all sat and where we entered into the kitchen from. Grandma had a fireplace that heated the house and she had a coal stove in the kitchen and she had well water. She had her rocker that sat by the window and she would sit at the window at night because she was a night owl. She stayed up until like three or four in the morning until grandpa got up to check on the fire because they never liked to go to sleep with a fire, um, with someone not tending to the fire in the wood burning fireplace. And so grandma would sit in her rocker. She'd talk on her rotary phone till the late hours and then she'd read her Bible looking out the window and seeing if anybody came into town. Sometimes the snow would be falling down as she's rocking away in her rocker. And I used to go to Grandma's when I turned 16 and got my driver's license. I think I was actually 15 and got my driver's license and I'd go down and sit at Grandma's like in the early afternoon when she got up because she, she slept late because she was up late. And uh, Grandpa, he would listen to the cowboys in the living room and Grandma would always complain that the TV was up too loud because he couldn't hear very well. And he used rabbit ears to get the channels, and he loved cowboys. And uh, and Grandma had an outhouse, and it was a ways from the house, so you had to walk to it. And in the wintertime, it could be slippery, and she'd always say, now be careful of the ice. And uh, the well water, she always had a pot of coffee, good old-fashioned coffee. And, uh, oh my gosh, just so many things. She had a food cellar, a food, you know, down in the basement was a food cellar with about enough food for a year non-perishable, many of it she canned herself. And there was always food at Grandma's, simple, basic food, but always food and you left very, very full. And uh, it was just wonderful conversations. Grandma had her wisdom, she shared her wisdom with me. And that's where I get much of my wisdom to this very day was Grandma and on Grandma's porch. In the summer, we'd sit on Grandma's porch. In the winter, we'd sit in the kitchen and take turns by the wood burning stove. Then when we would get too hot, we'd go over and sit in the rocker chair, you know, just like I have here, a rocker chair and a rocker chair over here. And uh, yeah, we'd sit on the front porch and we would talk. And then Grandma had kind of another swing porch out in the yard and it had a barbecue. And sometimes in the summer times, we'd have these big barbecues when I was little. 
And uh, yeah, Grandma's house. It was wonderful. It was just a very simple little house. And in the winter, she had these little houses that she would light up at Christmas time, just like you see up there, way up there, that I light up late at night. And I have more in here um, by Grandma's parlor. And uh, painting I'm still, still working on. Grandma's parlor over here. And uh, here are my other little houses that I light up at night. And, like, and there's Grandma's baby dolls she made out of socks. And I still have them to this day. She made them out of socks. Because living in the Great Depression, you had to do with what you had. And she taught me how to live simple and how to live, um, live very, very economically. And so I learned so much from Grandma. I really, really, really did how to cook simple foods. Uh, Grandma made the best fried chicken in the world. Oh my gosh, she made the best fried chicken and chili ever, 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 ever. And uh, I still can't make fried chicken like Grandma. Well, I'm vegan anyhow, but you know, I still make fried chicken for my family, but oh, it was so good. It was so simple just simple foods. And uh, yeah, I'm just trying to think about more about grandma's house. And it was just a simple house with love and warmth in it. And she made her own quilts. She made her own quilts. And her bed, her bedroom was always cold at night and she believed in a cold bedroom. And I still love my bedroom cold at night with a lot of blankets on me. So yeah, that was grandma's house and I wanted to share a little bit while I was reminiscing. Well, from my house to yours, may God bless you. And I guess I'm grandma now. I guess I'm grandma and this is grandma's porch. And so when I talk about grandma's porch, I guess I am grandma now. <laughs> from grandma's porch, from my house to yours, may God bless you. And I hope to talk to you soon again. Bye-bye.